by the time Aaron calls police shortly before 2 p.m., it's nearly nine hours since Denise has been taken. After I hit 911, it was all or nothing. I open the door, and there's two officers. And one of the first questions they asked, are you on drugs? I said, yes, the kidnapper struck me. They come in, and the first thing they do is rip that camera off the wall that he believes the intruders are watching him on. I just kind of gasped, like, what, what are you doing? From the police perspective, what, what they're confronted with is a man who said that his girlfriend was kidnapped in the middle of the night. There is a crazy story about this home invasion. They notice there's a clean scent in the home as though the carpets have been recently vacuumed. When they get to Aaron's bedroom, they notice there's a very small amount of blood on the bed sheet. We have a comforter that's missing. Aaron is in possession of Denise's phone, which he used to text her employer. Aaron's car is missing, and they know that he's waited a substantial period of time before dialing 911. They see all the components of what you might expect to see objectively in a domestic violence murder. Eventually, those officers seem to soften a little bit, and they tell me they were going to take me to the station to give a statement. My name's Marianne Quinn. I am Aaron Quinn's mother. My other son, Ethan, had sent us a text, so I called Ethan. He said, Denise has been kidnapped, and Aaron's at the police station. And I was just, I was shocked. And I said, well, we're coming down. When I first went to the police station, they take DNA samples and they tell me that they have to take my clothes. So I go, that's fine, take it. They hand me a pair of pants and a shirt. And I look down at these pants and it says Solano County Prison on it. And I realized that the prison closed. You're now in the police station talking to police, telling them your story. They were asking fairly open-ended questions. I acknowledge, I'm like, this sounds like it's a movie. I know it sounds bizarre. We're talking about swim goggles blacked out with tape, headphones giving instructions, intruders that are in full body wetsuits. I mean, w when do you hear about things like this? They told me the area I needed to stay in my house, said that there was gonna be video recording to monitor and make sure that I don't contact anyone. Detective Matt Mustard basically glazes over the incident at the house and starts asking about our relationship. I had been talking to my ex, and at that time, when I was still dating Denise. Is there tension in the relationship? Is she mad? Uh, I mean, she's upset. Concerned? Okay. Is she cheating? No, well, she felt that emotionally that was, uh, that was cheating in some sense. He starts asking questions about Denise, and oh, you guys were having problems, and the tone starts to change. I mean, did she like discover something? Did, well, I mean, was uh, she like going through your phone and like, she you know, through, what the hell is she this? Went through my phone. What'd she find? Found text messages. Yeah. What did it say? Um, that I mean, saying I still care, I want to work things through with her. Aaron admits that they've had tension in their relationship. So you can sort of understand why police might be a little bit suspicious. They also are going to look at him as a suspect because he is the closest person and the last person to have seen Denise alive. At what point do you realize that you're in trouble, in big trouble? I don't know, about 45 minutes in, he leans back in his chair and he tells me, I don't think you're being truthful. I don't think anybody came into your house. The story you're telling here, I didn't buy it at all. You gotta think about how this is all gonna play out. I don't have anything to think about. I'm telling you what. Okay, what? listen to me. There ain't no frogmen came into your house. Nobody dressed in wetsuits or, that it didn't happen. Remember, if Aaron's story is true, Denise has been kidnapped. So every minute that ticks by, she's in incredible danger. While this is going on with him, his parents and his brother are at the police station. They grilled his parents. We were telling him what a good kid he was. They kept asking, has he ever gotten angry? Has he, you know, has he done drugs? As a teenager, he was easy. He was the quarterback for the high school. He got voted as the boy of the year. That's what they call for leadership abilities and commitment to good values. They really, really did not want to hear that. 
they had already decided he had killed her. They said, maybe we're in a fight, and I pushed her down the stairs. Maybe we're experimenting with drugs. Maybe we're experimenting with prescription drugs. Maybe we're into weird sex things, and something went wrong. I don't think this happened intentionally. I think something happened, accidental, and you, you got to the point where you reacted the way that you did, and you had to come up with this story. They were trying to get him to make the simplest concessions. You and her weren't getting along. Listen to me. You're a good guy, Think but you lost your temper. You killed her and threw her in the bay. Not only do they tell you they don't believe you, they say, we think you killed her. Yes. Did you watch the Lacey Peterson, Scott, whatever the hell his name was? Did you watch that story in the public out of Modesto? Today is the third day of an all-out search for Lacey Peterson. Mustard even brings up the Lacey Peterson case. I came home and called mom, and Lacey wasn't there, and uh, no one had seen her. Scott Peterson famously murdered his wife, Lacey, in, in kind of the same general area, central California. She and her unborn baby were eventually recovered in the San Francisco Bay. Investigators say they plan to bring Lacey's husband, Scott, in for more questioning. You look at that and you go, that dude's a lying son of a bitch. That's the way people look at you. They're telling him that he's going to be perceived as a monster, and he keeps saying frogman because this person told them that he was wearing a wetsuit. The frogman obviously didn't do it, so who did it now? Well, it's the guy that I've been sitting here talking to tonight, so now I get out my puzzle pieces and I start figuring out, okay, how do I make it so you look like a monster? I don't want to do that. Ultimately, I'm looking for the truth. At that point, did you think about just getting up and walking out? I didn't think about getting up and walking out because I assumed that I was going to be in handcuffs. As soon as I stepped up, they were going to arrest me. Then something incredible happens. The San Francisco Chronicle actually gets a message. My name is Denise Haskins. Okay, March. You actually hear Denise's voice. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.